All right, guys, we are going at it again. Uh, Day Fight Banaz Podcast. How's everyone doing? Um, we're so pumped. We're having on one of our favorites. Uh, she is definitely on her Mount Rushmore of Fight Bananas. Uh, we love talking to her. We usually are talking to her right before a fight or right after a fight. It's kind of cool. Uh, nothing's in the air yet. And it's just cool to kind of, you know, chit chat and just see how things are going uh, during the Corona pandemic and all of that nature. Um, we're going to bring on one of our favorites, UFC uh, title contender, Felicia Phenom Spencer. Hey, so, guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me on again. <laughs> Thank you for having us, um, talking to us. We always appreciate your time. How's everything going with you? It's been, you know, it's been going good. Um, you know, it's, it's, I can't believe it's already been like o- over two months or right. more since my fight. Um, yeah. But it's been, you know, I've definitely uh, had a lot of like downtime, you know, a lot of recovery time and, you know, kind of getting back in the swing of things a little bit with a new, you know, a new normal as, as everyone's doing. Right. If if you can say the word normal, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, I definitely just want to chat with you, see what kind of came up. Definitely, you know, we'll gear it into some MMA topics and stuff of that nature. But uh, first of all, yeah, how was recovery? Um, you know, how was the fight? What was your thoughts days after, weeks after? Did you kind of think, um, you know, what could have been? Or did you think, hey, you know, I did what I thought I could do in it. Um, You know, Amanda is, and everyone thinks she is the greatest female fighter of all time. We talked about that before. And now afterwards, uh, just kind of what's your synopsis on the fight that happened a couple months ago? Yeah. I mean, like you said, she is, you know, she's the greatest for a reason. You know, she definitely uh, has her game on point and she was there, you know, fully there that night. Um, I feel, I felt really good going into it. Um, And looking back, like I, I think there are things that I, you know, could have done better. Okay. Um, you know, I always, I always know that anyone can be anyone. You know, I, I think there's, there's always uh, openings that could be, you know, handled better, decisions that can be done better. And I feel like in the fight, I kind of got lost in my own head a little bit. Okay. I wasn't really, I wasn't thinking about so much. Like I normally am, am very like in the zone as far as like being in the moment and just thinking about the task at hand and like always being confident. And I kind of, I actually kind of like lost some confidence for a little while. It was kind of unusual. And then I was like, Oh my God, why am I feeling like, why am I feeling this way? And then I was like thinking about why am I feeling this way in, right. in, in the bias, like, it just like, and then I'm like, why am I thinking about thinking about feeling this way? So it was just like, in my head, I was just like going in circles and just not really thinking about, uh, what I should be doing. I was just kind of like surviving for a little while, you know, and then it was right. obviously, she was obviously amazing too. So it was, uh, uh, it was a tough one, you know, but I, you know, I always feel like there, there are a lot of things that could have done better. I feel like a lot of it for me was kind of like, I was just kind of mentally shook, I guess, after a little bit. And then I just couldn't like get out of my own head. And you know, right. I, I didn't really follow any of my, like my game plan didn't go the way I thought it would. And you know, the things that I wanted to do, she could kind of, she was like a step ahead of me. So I was like, oh man, like the things that I want to do, I feel like she's going to be able to capitalize on things. She, she right. was, there, to do. <laughs> was there something that Amanda did um, different or you knew she's strong and she's going to throw the right? Was there something like, whoa, she's a little bit quicker than I thought, or maybe a uh, grapple of some sort. Is there something that happened in the fight that you weren't expecting? Um, looking back, you know, I, I was, not expecting um i worked a lot of like getting you know like usual getting someone to the cage and i knew i you know i worked on a lot of like just angles and stuff and i thought i would be able to get her to the fence a lot easier than i don't don't remember really any fence time there Mm -hmm. um so she was really really on point about that game plan she obviously knew that was a strength of mine and she avoided that really well um i also kind of wanted to show more like kind of like open mat shots but as I was like kind of going for it, she kind of she was like smiling and kind of like mimicking an uppercut, you know, like kind of just trying to play with me a little bit. Right. So I was like, oh, you know, if I shoot right now, she kind of knows and she's gonna get me. And I'm like, she hits hard, obviously. So, <laughs> so it was kind of like uh, it was a weird one, but I, you know, we smiled a lot to each other. It was throughout the whole thing. I felt like the sportsmanship was really level, was really high, and you know, overall, it was it was fun to. It. Um, it was a tough one, you know. Like I was obviously really sore and stuff after. Um, had a broken nose, broken orbital. My ankle hurt, you know, from from it bending a weird way. And um, you know, it just it took a little while, especially for my left leg to kind of like 
loosen up again. Um, and it was, it was honestly like, it was a, a tough one. I felt like I, um, I was really down for a little while. Like, I think I hit it pretty well, but like, I felt like I lost an opportunity. Like I didn't, I, cause I was so confident going in and like, I know what I can do. And I was like, you know, after the cyborg loss last year, I was like, well, this is, you know, I lost my, I lost the one opportunity, but there'll be more to come. And I'm like, now I got the second opportunity of a lifetime and I just, just didn't, didn't rise to it again. So I was like, man, two in a row, you know? <laughs> um, so right, it, was, it was tough. <laughs> I hear you. And uh, you know how much we appreciate you here at Fight Bananas. Um, just, I, after the fight, uh, so many in the media, even Amanda herself with putting the title, uh, how much respect there is towards you, how much admiration there is towards you. I feel the, the female division, the female fighters, Florida, Canada, the world, <laughs> like, they just have so much respect and admiration for you. Um, so I know, trust me, I know, yeah, you wanted to win the title. And, yeah. and <laughs> we have a pizza party here with the title. I know. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Like Gatorland told me to have an after party at yeah, Gatorland on like, <laughs> a private island. I'm like, yeah, cool. And then, yeah, I was like, oh, no, no after party for me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for the opportunity ultimately. That's why, you know, like I try not to like project being down or like any negativity because ultimately like, and that's why I try to go into every fight, just being happy and positive and not really that like nerves. Cause I feel like that's just like me not realizing the perspective of the world. Like I had an amazing opportunity. I'm still here. I'm fine. Like I'm so grateful for everything that's happened and just, you know, like things could be so much worse. You know, I'm so lucky to have every, every opportunity I've had. So Right. You know, in the grand scheme of things, like when I'm still pretty awesome, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a roof over my head, I got food, I got people around me that care about me and, you know, things are good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I kind of want to go in that direction in, in a way. Uh, I hear it all the time with fighters, uh, even on a, off a win, uh, kind of the, I don't want to use the word depression, but just the, 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 the down, the, the come off of the, there's just nothing like a fight. There's nothing like the the week of a fight, fight week, uh, the press, the media, the the adrenaline getting you going. Uh, you know, a lot of people work nine to five jobs. Uh, they put post yeah. office and they sell, you know, washer machines. You guys three times, maybe four times a year, uh, almost literally put your life on a line inside a cage. Uh, <laughs> and then like, you know, there's just no way to kind of come down from that. How is it to try to get back into it and, and walk the dogs and spend time with loved ones and just really try to get almost life back to normal in a weird way. How, how does that work? You know, luckily I do have, like I said, just great people that I love hanging out with. I doesn't have to make a big group, you know? So I mean, with COVID, it was kind of like, well, we're still kind of being careful, but you know, after the fight, I was like, well, now if I get it, like, oh, well, I'll just stay home. <laughs> Whereas before it was like, if I get it, I'm losing out on the fight, you know? Right. Um, but you know, yeah, it was just it was nice to just hang out with my husband and my dog and you know, friends around me. It's a couple of with a lot of people, but got to see my family after a couple of weeks and um I did I started really to get into like a lot of like yard work and Oop, we lost a fee. Let me kick you out and we're going to start it right back. Hey, we're on the fly here. All right. We just kicked out Felicia Spencer. Um, you know, I had to throw the short elbow. I had to do what I had to do. Uh, no, hopefully she'll just come right back in. Sometimes that happens. Technology is 2020. It's 2020. Like anything or everything that could go wrong usually does. Um, so, you know, hopefully we'll get her right back in and we'll just keep the show rolling. If not, uh, I'll cut and paste and you'll never see it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're just so pumped. We're so happy. We always love talking with Felicia. She's just one of our, like I said, she's just, we've known her for over a couple of years now. And um, I just remember we, I live in Daytona beach, Florida. She lives in Orlando and she's coming back right now. All right, here we go. Hey, Fee. Hey, sorry. I don't know when I cut off, honestly. Oh, it's all good. I, I just said it was 2020. It, it is what yeah. it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I was just saying, you know, just, I just, keep it simple, you know, a couple people around me, my dog, my yard, you know, it's, it's, it's been, uh, it's been pretty boring, but I've been enjoying it. <laughs> there you go. 
Um, and you, you mentioned kind of that C word. Um, you know, how has 2020 Corona, the Corona pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, the gym, I know how much you love the jungle MMA and fitness and so much around in Orlando. Um, how have you been, the family been, um, has the gym bounced back up? How's, how's everything kind of through this Corona pandemic? Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, during the fight camp, it just, it was kind of just finding that new rhythm, you know, and like just limit, very limited to what we could do, but taking advantage of everything we could do. Uh, since the fight, you know, I was like, well, after the fight, I won't go to the gym for a while. I don't need to, so I shouldn't. Um, the gym's really bounced back. They've they've done over the top job of all the possible, you know, uh, CDC, you know, requests or uh, you know, suggestions. Uh, all right. the spacing. They started doing like you show up, you can do like one partner for the whole week, and that's your partner, and then they're slowly building back, but they're limiting class sizes, so. Um, but I know they're, they're, every class is like full, which is like limited to, I don't know, like 10 people or 15 people or something. Sure. So, um, and it's kind of weird because there's like, there's a lot of, I'd say like half of it is like people that have been there, like, you know, the, the ones that are you know sticking to it, but like half the gym is like new people, like just people that left never came back. And then some a whole bunch, a whole new wave of people had interest in, you know, either fitness or getting in shape, you know, the sport, self-defense, all that, like everyone got sparked with like a new, a new love of something new. I don't know. So it's kind of crazy to go in there and like not know half the people there. <laughs> Cause I, right. I didn't go in for like a month and I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it, yeah. it, it's while you say that. And we, we've talked about it numerous of times, especially the state of Florida. We just think that it's just an upswing, especially with MMA people don't realize like how new one UFC and how new just mixed martial arts is. Um, you know, baseball has been around for over hundreds of years. Uh, yeah. You know, you can literally go back and UFC one is just, you know, 18 years ago, 17 years yeah, ago. It's right. still oh so fresh. Like we haven't even went like, uh, you know, so we're so much in it, uh, you know, with me and kids, my three-year-old is into it. So like okay. he will be that generation who, Instead of going to play t-ball, instead of going to play, you know, soccer, like most of what I did in our generation, in a way, he's going to grow up throwing short elbows and uh, yeah. arm people. So yeah. I just think I, the next generation, 25 years from now, we'll I'll, we'll have a little bit more gray hair, I guess, and talking uh, fights. And I think that next generation is going to blow our minds how skillful they are in their techniques and transitions of that sort. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it takes it takes a long time to like put things together from different arts and then to be able to mix them, you know, in the moment. So kids that are growing up, like already thinking about that transition, like it's going to be a whole nother world. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I guess I, I definitely got to bring it up. They matched uh, Amanda Nunes and Megan Anderson. Um, yeah. Been in the octagon with both. Uh, for one, I kind of want to stay on that match. And then I kind of, there's a little nasty rumor out there on the back end of that, but let's just kind of stick in the now. Uh, what do you think of Amanda Nunes and Megan Anderson, uh, you know, scrapping it up? Yeah, you know, honestly, I really wanted to see that fight. You know, I uh, I think I've said before somewhere that, you know, like, I'm, I think I should have gotten the first opportunity. And, like, I thought maybe if, if they found Megan in, like, another fight in the meantime, it would have been. Right. I know she wanted to stay active. So, um, so surprised it didn't. But I was like, yeah, you know, why not? Like, I thought I wasn't sure if Amanda wanted to go back to Bantamweight. I thought she wanted to stay at Featherweight. Um, and since she's doing two in a row at Featherweight, I don't know that she'll go back to Bantamweight. Um, I don't know what her plans are, but I think it's a great matchup. The styles are so different, you know, and like I said, anyone, anyone can beat anyone. It's all about those in the moment decisions, like at our level. I mean, there are levels even in the UFC, but it's, it's anyone can show up on a certain night and make the right decision. And a lot of it's not chance, but like just being in the moment to make those right decisions. Um, and the more you see of Amanda, of, of any fighter, the more, you know, people kind of break down ideas and, and make game plans and stuff like that. And Megan's a very different fighter than I am. So there's a lot of different things to, to focus on. So I'm interested in it. Absolutely. Uh, you said that like, upsets happen all the time. A couple of weeks ago in UFC, the Frankie Egner card, uh, Maria Agapopova was like one of the yeah. biggest favorites in like yeah. and Rousey home, all this stuff. She was the humongous favorite. Uh, yeah. looked good in the first round too. Looked phenomenal. Second round, you can tell, kind of gassed. Uh, yep. and her That's opponent just went to work on yeah. her. Um, yeah. 
So you kind of mentioned Amanda with featherweight and not bantamweight. I kind of agree with you on that too, but the things I've been hearing, and I don't know if you do hear them too, or sometimes you want to unplug kind of from MMA and I totally get that. Um, they're really scared on if Amanda gets through Megan and she's kind of this featherweight champ and with you and Megan easily the top two contenders and cyborgs and Bellator now, there really isn't a division. Uh, still, if you go to UFC.com, UFC rankings and the featherweight rankings, there still isn't any. It's like there's yeah. not a division. It was uh, Amanda, Felicia Spencer, yourself, and Megan. So if Amanda gets through her, there's like a dirty rumors or scary rumors of the division almost going away. Have you heard anything of it? What's your thoughts on it? Um, you know, on the back end of that, is that something that you would maybe have to go to Bantamweight? Or would you have to do something in Bellator? Just a lot of stuff there. I know there's a lot of unpack. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'll yeah. throw it away. It's definitely been like a rumor like that I've heard or the speculation, you know, that kind of thing, which is like, makes sense to think about that. You know, I've thought about it too. Like, what if this, what if that? Um, you know, I'm going to have to just see what happens because as far as I know, CFC wants to still build the division. They've said that they want to keep the division, you know, going. And, uh, but it does kind of put it in a weird position if Amanda wins and then there's no other contenders. But if she's going to bounce back and forth, who knows? Like, it's kind of, well, it's kind of, don't know. Right. <laughs> um, if, if Megan wins, that might spice things up a little bit, you know? Yeah, kind of for sure. Match or you know, maybe I'll get another title shot. I don't know. Um, probably Amanda getting a rematch would make sense, but uh, yeah, I kind of you know, I'm gonna have to just kind of wait and see. Like, I, I, I told the UFC that I don't really want to fight until end of the year, even early next year, because I really wanted some time to recover. Because, um, actually, kind of bringing up a conversation that DC uh, had with Ariel recently, right? You made a really good point about. Uh, taking a lot of damage, being fine in the fight, you know, or, you know, taking the damage in the fight, coming back too soon and then getting put to sleep from the same shots, you know, just your body doesn't recover that quickly. And I took a lot of damage. I know I did, even though I'm fine. Like, I feel like I can go train and I am going to train. I don't, I just don't want to take a fight. Right. That kind of, you know, punishment that I took um, just because I think I know things can change and I just want to be smart about it. Um, and I want to be able to make, you know, I don't want to be in fight camp all year. I had a really long fight camp before back to back and it was just, I needed to make the adjustments out of fight camp that I want to make and then go back into fight camp, you know, so it's right, right, always right. different. Um, I think that I touched on the question still about the featherweight division and, and, you know, maybe in this time, yeah, maybe, you know, I, I can't, I never can say no, that I'll never be a bantamweight, but I did tell the UFC consider me a featherweight, but if anything changed, you'll be the first to know, you know, like maybe during this time I can make changes, but, um, for now, you know, I'm definitely a featherweight. Yeah, definitely. Right. I, you, you brought it up and they, I think it was a lot from the Anthony Smith fight. Um, he just didn't look himself. Um, that fight against Glover to share in Jacksonville kind of to start this, uh, spark yeah. back with the UFC and the Corona and all that. Um, each, he, he just took a massive beating and, you know, to be blunt about it. And then he, he kind of came quick, you know, he came back Very before quick. a lot of fighters are kind of getting that second or third fight in this pandemic. He came back and he just didn't look the same with, uh, against Rockage. And like you yeah. said, some shots that you would think would be course, good shots kind of look like it was more damageful to Anthony. And it, so I totally agree. Um, I was going to kind of ask that too. What do you think of yourself at the end of this year, or early next year? Like you said, yeah, yeah I would love to see you early 2021, um, no reason to rush back. And like you said, kind of almost, you want to see this title fight in a way, cause you never know. Um, even Amanda's throwing out that little bit of the retirement talk and she's about to have yeah. the baby, uh, babies change stuff. It happens. So, yeah, um, yeah. I was surprised that there was a fight lined up so quick after the, you know, not quick, but a couple of months after her baby's going to be born. I was like, Oh, I wonder, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. I would have thought she would have waited to see after the baby before she took right. the fight. But right. You know, they, it's her full, you know, that's her job and it's a very flexible job to have. So I get it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's a, almost another conversation you work. She's worked so hard and she's got to this place. No, now she's making great money, main event fights, uh, yeah. sponsorships and, uh, you know, contracts of that nature. So, so in a weird way, you work 12 years, 14 years, um, you make ends meet, and now you're making 350, 450, 500,000 of fights. Like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll get a couple in a row. Yeah. Really, 
yourself up, you set your daughter up, you know, forever. It's just yeah. one of those things that it's it works. Um, but kind of getting back to if Megan wins and upsets Amanda, uh, and then that can really open you up. You know, you versus Megan have history and good history, a good fight, good fight for you. I mm -hmm. think there's nothing but mutual respect between you guys. I, I would yeah. think that they would say maybe Amanda would want to defend the Bantamweight again. Maybe Amanda, like you said, maybe just wants to walk away. We can see a Megan versus Fee uh, title fight in the featherweight division <laughs> in, uh, Valentine's Day, February 20, uh, 2021. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's definitely a possibility. So like, I, I have, you know, I kind of envision a lot of different possibilities, but I don't set any expectations for what could happen because I know anything could happen, right? <laughs> Especially with the division the way it is. So that's true. Kick back and see and you know, hopefully they'll have the division or maybe I'll be able to make a change that can get me down or, or I'll, you know, just go where I can fight. So definitely. hopefully, um, hopefully we, with the UFC. we appreciate your time. Like always, uh, we have 10 fun questions. We know probably the dogs are going to want to be walked soon. So I'll, I'll run through them. <laughs> uh, kind of the first thing that comes to your head and uh, we'll just have fun with it. You ready? Yeah, ready. All right, here we go. Um, who would play you in a movie about you? Uh, that's a good question. Oh man, I don't know. I can think of actors that look like me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll just off the top of my head, probably not. But Angelina Jolie with the Tomb Raider stuff, she's kind of like a little badass. Uh, there you go. I like to play badasses. Actually. Yeah, why not? I <laughs> I know my my husband would enjoy that very much. He's he loves Mr. and Mrs. Smith, so uh, he would think that's a good one. <laughs> that's a classic. That's one of your. That's like one of those. Anytime it's on like TNT or TBS, and you're flipping through the he, channel. It's on. <laughs> you know, that's a classic. Yeah, he thinks it's a romantic movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Oh yeah, let's watch this one." <laughs> <laughs> you guys are together forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if you had to start a charity, what would it be for? Um. Well, you know, I I would want it to be something like in my community, uh, like mm -hmm. helping, helping kids, especially maybe like kids with like education related or like daycare, having like a good daycare, like a good education from the start, that kind of that kind of stuff, or good like playground, good after school stuff, activities like that stuff would be meaningful for me. Cool, oh, I love that. Great answer. Um, dead or alive, two people to have dinner with. Um. You know, I always, I always jump back to Gina Carano. It would be just iconic for me to be able to have a meal with and uh, let's see, dead or alive. Uh, uh, probably someone like that's in like my family, uh, like one of my great grandmothers that I never met or something like that. That would be, or great grandfathers, like someone like that would be really cool to be able to talk about family history that right. never got told, you know? Oh, that'd be really cool. I never thought of that one. I thought you were going to do Gina Carano and The Rock again. I thought somehow <laughs> that could both of them again in the same line. It's like, hey, we're doing big things here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is your biggest fear? Um, my biggest fear, um, just not using my time wisely. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I guess that's that's one that I tried that I kick myself and like I you know when I don't use my time the way I want to late when I look back on it I'm like oh you're a real piece of shit you know <laughs> so, <laughs> something like that I don't know other stuff I'm not really scared of like bugs or anything so <laughs> it was uh so I did the same thing with uh, Joey Beltron you know UFC Bellator now he's the bare knuckle uh heavyweight champion oh, yeah and he's like, uh, damn, I'm really not afraid of anything. He's like, wait, wait, rats. He's like, I'm afraid rats. of rats. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> no, he said it was so funny. He's like, no, nah, yeah. he's the heavyweight yeah. champion. He's a badass. Yeah. Like, he's not afraid of nothing. He's like, no, rats. <laughs> right. Maybe maybe like really high heights too. I don't know. I get a little uneasy. I used to be all right with it, but maybe a little uneasy now. <laughs> um, so. What everyday thing do you still get super excited about? Um, lately I get super excited when, uh, one of my seeds sprout out of the ground. One of my there you plants go. that I grew. <laughs> I'm like, ah! <laughs> How about the painting? The, the painting a couple of days ago looked great. The, what was that? The painting. 
Oh yeah, yeah, that was the first time I did that. That was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, what's a untold? What's one of your favorite locker room stories? Um, man, I don't know. There's one from an amateur fight um, in Ocala. So you know Ocala. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of out in the sticks. You know, we had it was my second amateur fight. I was somehow the main event. So um, after the fight, my team like runs me out of you know the the place, and I'm like, oh, we're going to after party. You know, we're we're going to have fun. And they're like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, all right, all right, let's go. You know, this is fun. Yeah, I won. And then later on, like probably like a year later, I, somehow I didn't hear about it until then. Turns out there was like a shootout about to happen in the parking lot. So everyone's like, get the hell out of here, let's go. And I'm just like. <laughs> Yay, one after party. Let's just go to the after party. <laughs> I'm like, I guess there was some really, you know, horrible stuff about to happen, and I was like, completely not even aware of it. <laughs> oh my, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> um, yeah. a more for you. Uh, who is the most interesting person you have ever talked to? Interesting person. Oh, I don't know. Like in what way? I don't know. My husband's pretty, pretty crazy to talk to sometimes. Um, interesting. Oh man, I'm sure I'm. I always get locked up on these questions. <laughs> so I don't know. I'll have to pass on that one. I, I really can't think of. Okay. Uh, what's one, What's one of your biggest pet peeves? Um. Man. I know there are some good ones. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, I guess just off the top of my head, like leaving, uh, like <laughs> my husband leaves his Q-tips in random places, and that drives me crazy. You know, it's gross. <laughs> but like, I know there's things out in the world that really right tick me off. But that's yeah. the first thing that came to mind, just at home, you know. <laughs> In 2020, we're dealing with so much uh, <laughs> issues. We're dealing with so many bad yeah. things going on. But no, the Q-tips, I, I, yeah. I, I take the cake. <laughs> uh, to be like uh, on a more like intense level, like just people just not being open and understanding of other people. Like just right. everyone's a villain if they don't agree with you. Like that's like kind of crazy. Like, oh, it does. Uh, that's I, a whole nother conversation. <laughs> It really is. I, me and my wife, we have, we, you know, after we put the kids to bed and we just have, we talk about stuff and especially with everything going on, there's just so much. And it's like, I, I love how her and I, we can just, we just go back and forth. Sometimes we agree a hundred percent. Sometimes we disagree, but at least we just kind of communicate back and forth. And I think at the end of the day, that's just what's missing. Uh, yeah. You might think Cyborg's the greatest ever. I think Amanda's the greatest ever. At least we can go back and forth. And yeah, they're both great. And we can do this. It's like just this yeah. um, really people kind of close their minds around things. It's just, it's hard to communicate. Yeah. It really is. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, two more for you. Um, who's your favorite movie character ever? Movie character. Um, oh, man. Uh I don't know. I love so many movies. I I mean, just like actors, like I really enjoy Adam Sandler stuff and Jim Carrey stuff. So like, probably like one of their movies, you know, like just yeah. would impersonate their their character a lot. Right. Um, Isn't it amazing? As, like, yeah. Carrey now, like he's so like thoughtful and he's like such a he's Ace Ventura to me. Like I grew up in right. Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber, and now like he's writing books and he's just like a more thoughtful guy. I'm like. Man, my kids will just never understand. They just won't yeah, get it. <laughs> they won't. <laughs> uh, last one for you. Uh, in 2025, Felicia Spencer will be. Wow, that's. Huh. Hopefully, UFC champ. That'd be cool. <laughs> Hopefully, like a long time UFC champ. Um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, UFC make team? plans for the future, like, you know, too far, especially, but that'd be a nice one, you know. It would. Then, it would. Uh, it'll probably be close to my, you know, retirement from fighting and then family making and all that. So <laughs> I'm <cool>. guessing. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, Felicia, we always appreciate your time. Uh, I remember walking through the jungle two years ago, two, three years ago, whatever it was, and uh, you're still in Invicta FC and just kind of chatting it up and 
talking about what you wanted to do in the future and how you how far you have come. Um, we just appreciate you so much. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank you very much for coming back on the Fight Finesse podcast. Yeah, thanks again for having me. It's always fun to fun to chat. So anytime. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Steve. We'll talk to you soon.